I, I cannot, uh, words cannot express how grateful I am to all of you, my true friends, who have, have helped me in waging this courageous battle. When I got into this eight months ago, I had no doubt that it would be uh, anything but a tough fight. And it is a tough fight. But I've always been drawn to a tough fight. And I felt when I got into this, as I looked down the, the road, I, I felt very firmly that our country was scanning the horizon, looking for new possibilities and new leadership and a way to heal our divisions and move us forward. And you guys have been with me every step of the way, and I cannot thank you enough. I have come to love Iowa. The beauty of your landscape, the warmth of your people. <laughs> and Iowa has been like a second home for me this past year. From college campuses to family farms, I have had the privilege of getting to know Iowans uh, whose passion for our democracy is well known and renowned. And, and I want to share with you just one, one, one brief story. I was in Burlington, Iowa. And I've collected so many stories across your state from really decent, caring, compassionate men and women who love our country. But I will never forget one of these. In fact, I, I told a reporter earlier today, it was the story I'll always carry with me. In Burlington, I met a woman whose son has served two tours of duty in Iraq. And she, and she knew that there was an upcoming democratic debate. And she came up to me and she said, Governor, when all of you candidates are on stage together, I want you to please tell the other candidates not to uh, refer to my son as a pair of boots on the ground. She said, my son is an American soldier, and he is my son. And I was so proud to be able to honor that request of hers. And in an essence, that's what these Iowa caucuses are all about. It's about each person's voice being heard, each person's story being heard. And uh, I, Katie and uh, the kids and I uh, decided that it would be an extreme poverty indeed if the Democratic Party only had two candidates to choose from. Um, and so we made this fight. And uh, I cannot thank you enough for uh, giving me an opportunity to be a part of writing this story of our country's future. I want to thank everyone that came out to our events and lent me their ear. Everyone who went out to caucus for me tonight. I, uh, everyone who went out to caucus for me. And I want to give you my deepest gratitude. And uh, I, was getting, I was getting tweets from people in caucus locations. Uh, God bless uh, Denison, by the way. And Si se puede. And Si se puede. And we were getting calls from other people. We were getting tweets saying, we're here. They're yelling at us. But tell the governor we're holding strong. He's, uh, You know, my parents taught the six of us that uh, the only th that the politics is actually a noble service to others, and that the only thing wrong with it is that not enough good people bother to try. Each of us has the power and the responsibility to hold strong and point our country to a better future. Our economy isn't money, it's people. It's all of our people. And no one who works hard for a living should ever have to raise their children in poverty. It was their cause that, that we made our cause and was part of this tough fight. And um, we have to hold strong for that fight. We have to continue to fight to make the minimum wage a living wage so that every family can work hard and get ahead. To pay overtime pay for overtime work and equal pay for men and women to move our country forward. And we also have to hold strong to the, to the values and the, and the principles that that unite us. We have to be unafraid to face our challenges, Mayor, right? We have to be able to look at climate change and see that it's the greatest business opportunity to come to the United States of America in a hundred years. And 
And I was honored to be the first candidate to put forward a plan to move us to a 100% clean electric energy grid by 2050 and create 5 million jobs along the way. We are a great nation, and we are a good, and we are a compassionate and a generous people. And we have to hold strong to the values that make us Americans. And that, too, is what this tough fight was about. Our diversity is our strength. And we need comprehensive immigration reform to lift 11 million of our neighbors out of the shadow economy and into the full light of uh, an American economy. I, I had, uh, I've met with so many people across our country. I met with a family, uh, the Ramirez family in Texas. And two parents, undocumented, two of their older doc, uh, daughters covered by President Obama's executive action, and their 13-year-old girl, Abigail, born in the USA, American citizen, and this little girl goes to school every single day wondering and fearing all day that when she goes home, the doors of her home will be kicked open and her parents will be deported. We are a better people than that. And we need to continue to hold strong to the truth that the enduring symbol of the United States of America is not the barbed wire fence, it is the Statue of Liberty. And two of the most uh, incredible people, the most inspiring people I met in the course of this campaign were Sandy and Lonnie Phillips. They lost their daughter, Jessie, in that uh, theater shooting in Aurora, Texas. And they used this campaign to transform their grief. And you know what, everyone? We also help transform the grief of all of those who have lost loved ones to guns and gun violence. It was because of our campaign that we drove this issue, and it's because of this campaign that we will restore common sense gun safety legislation in the United States of America. And so look, uh, this cause continues. This type of fight continues. And uh, I have never been more proud of the people that have been associated with this campaign. Uh, I've never worked with a better group of, of young American patriotic men and women than the ones I worked with on this campaign. And I also want to say this, that look, no man ever had a stronger or more courageous family in a tough fight than I've had in, in Katie O'Malley. Katie, thank you for standing by me every step of the way, and thank you for being the love of my life, my sword and my shield. And without you, uh, I, we would never have been able to help with as many people as we have. And Grace, thank you, Tara, and Jack, and William. The closer. I think one of the proudest moments of this campaign was when I tuned into MSNBC and I saw William uh, very, very clearly, without any anger, without any fear, call out the racist and fascist rhetoric of Donald Trump. And say very firmly that he's looking forward to the fall because his father's going to hit Donald Trump like a freight train. And I just might. So look, gang, in, uh, uh, in conclusion, there is no conclusion. <laughs> this fight continues. But look, we fought very, very hard to, in order to give the people a choice. And the people have made their choice tonight. And uh, it was hard to get over that threshold here. And uh, I know that those numbers don't reflect all of the hard work that you did. Uh, but uh, we have driven this debate. And, uh, and so tonight, I, I have to tell you that I am suspending this presidential bid. But I am not ending this fight. Because the fight that you are, and I are engaged in is a tough fight. And I believe that the toughness of the fight is the way the hidden God has of telling us we're actually fighting for something worth saving. Our country's worth saving. The American dream is worth saving. And this planet is worth saving. So as we march forward to the fall, let us all resolve together 
that the love, the generosity, the compassion, and the commitment of this campaign will continue to point our country forward. That we must hold strong for that third year, third grade kid who's only going to be in third grade once. We must hold strong for that senior citizen who has worked her whole life and now finds herself having to choose between her food and her medicine. Let us hold strong for that mom and dad who are working three jobs between them in order to make ends meet and sweating over cutting up the bills over the kitchen table after the kids are in bed. Look, we are a great country. And we are a good people because of our generosity, because of our compassion, because of the belief we share in the dignity of every person, our own responsibility to advance the common good, and our understanding that, yes, in fact, we are all in this together. All of us, new Americans, American Muslims, gay and lesbian, transgender Americans, all Americans. We are one, our cause is one, and we must help each other if we are to succeed. God bless you guys, and God bless the United States of America. And thank you for allowing me to make this offering out of love. Thank you.